As a church, we are getting ready to go into a season of prayer and fasting. And before we go into this season as a church, I want you to understand the basics and benefits of fasting. See, biblical fasting is voluntarily abstaining from food for a spiritual purpose. Now, anytime we abstain from something for a spiritual purpose, we call it fasting. When the Bible uses the word fasting, it's talking about abstaining from food. A true biblical fast always involves giving up food for a set period of time. Now, some of you may be thinking, fasting, are you serious? Like, how can giving up food make a difference in my life? Is it really that important? Does subtracting food really have any spiritual implications? I don't know, ask Adam and Eve, did their attraction to food have any implications in their life? The very first sin in the Bible was connected to food. What about Esau? He gave up his birthright for a bowl of stew. What about the Israelites? Their appetite for food caused them to complain against God and go back into slavery in Egypt. What about Jesus? He fasted from food for 40 days before starting his ministry. And what was the first thing the enemy tempted him with? food. He said, if you really are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. If you don't think there's a connection between food and your spiritual life, you need to check again. It plays a much bigger role in our spiritual lives than we realize. See, our lives are consumed with food. We put massive amounts of time, energy, and thought into food because we love food. But it also has the tendency to control our lives. Paul in Philippians talked about people whose God is their belly. Their appetites ruled their lives. And fasting says, I will not be ruled by my appetite. My God is not my belly, and I will prove it by putting God first, by denying my appetite. Fasting starves the rule of our appetites and changes what we hunger for. In Matthew 4, it says this, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus started his public ministry with a 40-day food fast, and it says he was hungry. Like, thank you, Captain Obvious. Of course he was hungry. He hadn't eaten in 40 days. But the reason why they put it in there is because the author is letting us know that Jesus is God, but he is also fully man. And just like anyone else, he got hungry when he didn't eat for 40 days. That is when the enemy came to tempt him with food. I will tell you that the moment you set out to seek God in prayer and fasting, you will be tempted to eat. You will get more offers for free food than you've ever had before. There are going to be birthday parties and cupcakes everywhere, so be prepared. You will be tempted. But look at Jesus' response in Matthew 4.4. 4. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Fasting satisfies the void in our hearts that can only be filled by God. Fasting is saying, God, I need you more than I need food. God, I crave you more than I crave food. I'm more hungry for you than I am for food. Fasting is how our soul cries out for more of God. See, there is a cry of your belly and there's a cry of your soul. There is a cry of your belly that says, I need chicken wings. I need pizza. I need ice cream. I need a kale salad. All right, I don't think anybody cries out for kale, but there is a cry for your belly every single day that says, feed me. But there's also a cry of your soul that says, God, I need you. God, I'm hungry for more of you. Psalm 63 verse 1 says this, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. There is a spiritual hunger and thirst for God in our souls. And that cry gets drowned out by the cry of our bellies for food. And when you fast, you turn down the cry of your belly for a short period of time so that your soul can cry out for God. And God answers the cry of your soul when you fast. This is why fasting makes you more aware of God's presence. There is a heightened sensitivity to God's presence when you fast. 
You get more out of the Word of God when you fast. The Bible comes alive and you hear God speaking to you from His Word. Fasting will enable you to break free from destructive habits. Many people get set free from lifelong addictions during fasting. Fasting softens your heart to the things of God. You'll be more compassionate towards others. When you fast, you'll hear the voice of God with greater clarity. Fasting drowns out the noise of this world and allows you to hear God with greater clarity. Fasting will break you out of your spiritual slump. See, we all get into slumps spiritually when we aren't really growing and fasting will cause you to break out of that slump faster than anything else. Fasting is like a spiritual oil change. It cleans out the junk in our lives and fills us with fresh oil of the Holy Spirit. There are so many incredible spiritual benefits to fasting, not to mention the physical benefits as well. Fasting is like spring cleaning for your body. It will jumpstart any weight loss goals that you have and help you get on track to a healthier lifestyle. If you'd like to read more on the health benefits of fasting, check out the books 101 Reasons to Fast by Bob Rogers and Fasting Your Way to Health by Lee Bueno. Now that we've talked about the benefits of fasting, let's talk about the basics on how to get started. The first thing you need to do is determine what kind of fast you're going to do. See, there are three different types of food fasts. The first one is a complete fast. This is where you don't eat any food, you only drink water and other liquids. Now, a smoothie or milkshake doesn't count as a liquid, right? Just because you can put it in a blender doesn't make it a liquid. But the complete fast is the most common fast found in the Bible, and it's the most life-changing type of fast. Now, I know some of you think, look, man, I can't go without food. I will die. Look, you're not going to die. You're not going to starve. Starvation doesn't set in until after 40 days, so you'll be fine. Now, some people cannot do this type of fast because they have a medical condition that prevents them from doing a complete fast. So if you have a medical condition that prevents you from doing a complete fast, then I would recommend the second type of fast, which is a selective fast. This type of fast involves removing certain elements from your diet. One example of a selective fast is the Daniel fast. In scripture, Daniel removed meat, sweets, and bread from his diet, and he only ate vegetables. See, this type of fast has become really popular recently because you can still fast and still eat food and carry on your normal routines, which kind of defeats the purpose. So I only recommend this type of fast if you have a medical condition that prohibits you from doing a complete fast. And the third type is a partial fast. This fast is sometimes called a Jewish fast. It involves abstaining from eating anything in the morning and afternoon and only eating dinner or a sun up to sundown fast. This is a common practice in the Jewish culture. They did this twice a week. Muslims do this for an entire month during Ramadan. So the first step is to determine what kind of fast you're going to do. The second step is to determine how long you're going to fast. And so we're doing a corporate fast as a church. So I would encourage you to do a complete fast for as long as you can, and then maybe switch to a selective or partial fast if you can't do the full fast. Now, if you're attempting to do your first complete fast, I would encourage you to start slow. Maybe set a goal to do three days complete and then do the rest Daniel fast. Or if you did a three day fast last time, maybe do a five day complete fast and then do the rest as a partial fast. But start small and always push yourself to do more the next time. And the third thing you need to do is make time for prayer. Fasting without prayer is a hunger strike and God doesn't respond to hunger strikes. So make sure you make extra time for personal prayer and make sure to join us for our times of corporate prayer at the church. If you're interested in learning more about the practical tips to fasting, we have some resources available for you. Just click on the link to access those resources.